With less than two weeks until the NFL draft, everyone's trying to figure out what's going to happen. My question is, who do we believe? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Believer's Talk. My name is Joe and welcome to this pre-draft edition of Believer's Talk where we're going to talk about the 2021 NFL Draft and look at it from an NFL owner or GM's perspective and let you know what to believe. Again, thank you guys for joining me. My name is Joe. If you're new to this channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button for continual Buffalo Bills and Buffalo sports content. Also, while you're here, hit that thumbs up button, like this video, and let me know what you think in the comment section. I want I want to know what stories you believe and what you don't believe when it comes to the NFL draft. Yesterday on Tuesday, uh, Brandon Bean had a press conference with Buffalo Media and he said some things that had people raising their eyebrows a little bit and have us questioning the pre-draft process, right? And have us questioning what the Buffalo Bills are targeting in the pre-draft process. Well, I'm here to tell everyone this. I don't care if you're an NFL insider. I don't care if you're a draft expert. I don't care if you're a local YouTuber, local media, whoever you might be. The GM, the coaches, even some of the players, they're going to do this thing to you in April. It's called lying. Okay. This is a very competitive league. The NFL is a very competitive league and teams will lie to make sure that other teams don't know what they're thinking. Do you think Bills fans were the only fans who watched Brandon Bean's press conference yesterday? Or who at least wanted to watch Brandon Bean's press conference yesterday? Do you think Bills media, do you think Bills insiders, do you think the Bills front office doesn't watch what other GMs and coaches and owners are saying leading up to the NFL draft? So we got to put a little bait out there. A lot of times you hear it's called a smoke screen, right? You're all about smoke screens. We have plenty of examples of this dating all the way back to the early 90s. I'll just give you some for example. In 2018, at this point, a week and a half before the draft, Sam Darnold was the number one overall quarterback that was going to be taken in the NFL draft. It wasn't until the day before the draft when you started hearing rumors of, oh, it might be Baker. It might be Baker Mayfield, and who, of course, was the first quarterback taken in the 2018 NFL draft by the Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield. So these lies constantly happen. Not only do you have lies, not only do you have lies, and we'll talk about some more examples here in a second, but you also have things, reports that come out a day, two days before the NFL draft starts. Remember Larry Tunsil, right? Larry Tunsil, great offensive uh, tackle for, I think now the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? He was projected to be a top 10, maybe even a top 5 draft pick. Now all of a sudden a video comes out of him with a bong mask on and guess what happens? He is then drafted, I believe, 17th overall by the Miami Dolphins, okay? So things leak. Remember what leaked about Josh Allen the day of the draft, okay? So things leak and players lose draft stock because of those things leaking all the time. So just because we hear things now... Don't make it believe, don't make it think that it's what's going to happen. And that includes what Brandon Bean said on Tuesday. I see so many reports, so many people going, oh, well, he said this, this, this. So that must mean this, this, this. No, it does not. Stop thinking that. And listen, mock drafts are fun, right? We have fun with our mock drafts. We enjoy them. But if you get the first pick right, if you get picks right for your team, it's blind luck. It's blind luck that you've got them right. You have trades that are going to happen on draft day that no one's talked about yet because no one knows about them yet. You have uh, you have situations, as we talked about earlier, where players are going to go up and down draft boards, again, which no one's talking about because no one knows it yet. Sure, I'm going to have my hot takes on draft day, and I hope that you guys join me on day one. I'll be a, a special guest on Buffalo Fanatics uh, during, I believe, the 9.30 hours. So make sure you join me for that. I love the draft coverage. I never do coverage here because there's so many great Buffalo Bills YouTubers who do YouTube who do draft day coverage that I feel like I'm just I'm I'm unnecessarily um, dirtying muddying the waters if I do more draft coverage as well for you guys and I want you guys to be able to enjoy uh, the best draft coverage out there. But you look back, like I said, early '90s, right? 1991, Jimmy Johnson's the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. This was before Jerry Jones decided to take over everything that happened in Dallas. And Jimmy Johnson was was part of, uh, and I actually think 
he wasn't even the owner yet. But anyway, Jimmy Johnson was part of the draft day process. And he said that the deal, the first round deal for uh, Rocket Ishmael was off the table. Everything was off the table. Nothing works. That trade happened the next day. The next day, Jimmy Johnson, the Dallas Cowboys trade to get the number one overall pick and select Rock Ishmael, wide receiver. So these things constantly happen. So let's not read too much into what happened Tuesday. Let's not read. I don't care if it's Mel Kuyper. I don't care if it's Adam Schefter. I don't care if it's Chris Mortensen. I don't care who it is. Let's not read too much into what they're saying. Let's not respect them all as far as their draft minds and as far as what they say. You know, I want to talk about how Mel Kuyper gets pitched right. And he does. He does. He does this for a living and he does a pretty good job but when you do 17 mock drafts before the draft happens you're bound to get a few picks right you're bound to look bad and get a few wrong so let's not act like he he's the no off sale and i mean, remember um what, what year was that 94 i believe it was when the indianapolis colts owner went off on mel kuyper because mel kuyper thought the colts needed to take a quarterback and he didn't take a quarterback, and then he had an interview with Chris Mortensen. There's a YouTube video about it if you guys don't see it. It's actually pretty funny. But guys, I'm telling you all to relax, right? Relax. As I'm sitting here not breathing, uh, talking about uh, what we what we can expect in the draft. Guys, don't think that what Brandon Bean said on Tuesday as he's answering questions from the media wasn't thought out. Don't think that what Brandon Bean and other GMs think isn't planned out. Now, I know everyone and their mother believes that Trevor Lawrence is going to the Jacksonville Jaguars, okay? And he's the first overall pick. But what if he isn't? Think about, and, 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 and I'm 99% sure he's the first round pick too. Don't get me wrong. But imagine the tailspin the draft goes in if Trevor Lawrence isn't the first overall pick. Imagine the tailspin the draft goes in if the Jets take another quarterback instead of Zach Wilson. Right? Everyone's thinking that the, the, the 49ers at number three are going to take Matt Brown, maybe, or Justin Fields, or Trevor Lance. What if the Jets take a shot on Fields or Lance, and then all of a sudden Wilson's available at three, and it just changes everything. Everyone is expecting the first three picks, three quarterback, 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 and I can easily see that. What if it's not? Then you're talking about teams trading up. Then you're talking about all these things that are about to happen. And no one knows what's going to happen. No one knows what those surprises are until draft day. Daniel Jones going sixth to the New York Giants. No one expected that. No one expected that. So all these things change on a minute-to-minute -minute basis, both pre-draft and on draft day. So although we heard what Brandon Bean had to say on Tuesday, although we trust Sal Capaccio, Matt Perino, and all the great Buffalo Bills content creators, who I love, and I watch all of them, I, I, I implore everyone to watch all of them, and I love Buffalo Fanatics, and Hashtag Sports, and all of them too, we don't know what to believe. We're telling you what we hear, you're hearing what you want to hear, and we don't know what to believe. Do the Bills know who they're picking at 30? I think they have a good list. I think they have a, a list of about five, maybe six guys where they know. They know who they want. Are we going to know? Not before draft day. So again, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Listen, I'll be doing a mock draft too. They're still fun to do. And I'll be doing it with you guys. The fans did last year. We were live. We'll do it again this year. I'll let you know the date soon. Uh, but again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Remember, don't believe what you hear just yet. I look forward to talking to you all soon. Until I do, go Bills.